I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect Legendary Edition. The beacon on Eden Prime was destroyed. Before it self-destructed, it burned horrific images of death and galactic destruction into the mind of Commander Cory Shepard. Whether these are images of the past or warnings of the future, she can't really say. Real quick, before we jump into this episode, I just want to say that there are timestamps in the description if you are only interested in the main story of Mass Effect and you don't want to see me talk to every single person that's around and listen to over an hour of uh, these alien species talking. Links are in the... the timestamps are in the description. You can click on those. You can see the, uh, the important stuff, the really important stuff. But I really do feel that this episode is important to world building. Uh, so I hope that you guys watch it. I hope that you guys enjoy it. And if not, timestamps below. Enjoy! And hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to Missiledyne Online in our continuing playthrough of Mass Effect Legendary Edition, premiering every single day at 2 p.m. Eastern right here on YouTube. Huge shout out to those of you watching in the premiere. Sincerely appreciate you, and I love getting to talk and hang out and get that feedback in real time with you. It's awesome. It's one of my, one of my favorite parts of doing YouTube in general is those darn premieres. Thank you. Make sure you hit that subscribe bell notification thingy so that you know when we are premiering new episodes. And don't forget that likes really do help out this series if you are enjoying it. In this episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition Insanity Difficulty, we are heading for the first time ever to the seat of the galactic government, the Citadel, which I'm very excited to go. This, my friends, is Side Quest Central, but we're also going to get two new squad mates added to our team in just the next couple of episodes. So this is very exciting. Uh, anyways, why don't we jump into it and see what Commander Shepard has in store for us. God, she's so cool. She is so cool! The last time that we uploaded a video, by the way, we also uploaded a trophy guide, which you can check out in the description of Good this timing, video. Good Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. See that taxpayer money at work. I can't wait to see how this looks now in this new updated version. Flagship of the Citadel fleet. Well, size isn't everything. Why so touchy, Joker? I'm just saying you need firepower, too. Look at that monster. Its main gun could rip through the barriers in any ship in the Alliance fleet. Good thing it's on our side, then. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. Clearance granted. You may begin your approach. Transferring you to an Alliance operator. Roger, Alliance Tower. Normandy out. There's Normandy, something... This is Alliance Tower. Please proceed to dock 422. There's just something so magical about arriving to the Citadel for your first time. Oh, man. The Destiny Ascension, the flagship of the entire solar system galaxy. It's crazy. It's so cool. This is an outrage! The Council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Seren? You can't just ignore a rogue Spectre. I demand action! You don't get to make demands of the Council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Seren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime, in case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. Seren's their top agent. They don't like him being accused of treason. I can see why. Saren's a threat to every human colony out there. He needs to be stopped. The Council has to listen to us. Settle down, Commander. You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy for the Spectres. 
The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and the beacon was destroyed. That's Saren's fault, not hers. Then we better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the Spectres. Come with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. And that's why I hate politicians. Yeah, no crap! That guy is one son of a turtle, let me tell you. Ambassador Udina, you suck, bruh! Anyways, we can head over to this computer console. These are very important. So you remember when I was talking about how you need electronics and decryption? Well, this actually is the only way that you can get some side quests that are available in the game. And trust me, you're going to want to do this. Alliance Patrol Report. Captain Hendrickson reported some unusual energy readings during a patrol of the Argos Rose Cluster. She had particular concerns about the Hydra system, but was recalled before her team could investigate further. No patrols are scheduled for that sector. Do we want to send in a recon team? Haha! -ha, that's us! We're the recon team! So, welcome to the Citadel. This is our first chance to really explore and meet all of the races that are found here in this galaxy. Including... The Eldcor and the Volus. Sounds like we came into some drama going on here. Also, real quick, I want to point out these. These are called Keepers, and just remember that this one's here because we are going to have to find all of them throughout this whole citadel, uh, which actually isn't as bad as it sounds. Anyways, let's stick Hello to there, Zelton here. Human. Sincere apology, but I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. You seem distressed. Is there something I can do to help? Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? This is all going so wrong, and it is the Asari Consort's fault. She's the one who started all this. Explanatory. Tone. The Elcor describe how they're feeling because they're so monotone that you might take it the wrong way. Who's this Asari Consort? Curious. You have not heard. You must be new to the Citadel. Everyone knows Sha'ira, the Consort. I cannot speak more about this problem. It is too sensitive. Suffice it to say, she has compromised my authority as a diplomat. Hmm. Where can I find the Sasari Consort? She is across the bridge from here. Her offices are easy enough to spot. Good day, human. Now you'll notice that we didn't actually get a journal update for that, meaning that's not quite a quest. Not yet. Earth Clan, you are in the wrong place, I think. Your ambassador is next door in the large office. Chastising remark. Don't be so rude, Dan. At least introduce yourself. <sighs> I am Din Korlak, Volus Ambassador. Is there something I can do for you, Earth Clan? I love these little walrus dudes. I love them so much. And the cow guys, I'm into them. What is this place? You are in the embassy for the Volus and the Elcor. Your ambassador is next door, in his own office. In this shared space, I aid my fellow Volus when I'm not being interrupted. So it seems to me like they're a little angry that they don't get their own offices, but humans do. Oh, man. What is it you do here? I look out for the best interests of the Volus people. No easy task considering how often we are overlooked by the council. Chastising rebuke, Dan. The council favors your species greatly. You are naive. The Earth Clan will be invited to the Council long before our species will. Why aren't the Elcor or Volus part of the Council? All species must prove themselves before they join the Council. 
all but the Earth clans, it would seem. Dismissive. Ignore the Volus Ambassador, human. He is incorrect in his assessment. Really? How long have we been waiting? How long do you think we'll continue to wait? Bah, this talk is wasted on the humans. So a lot of this first time to the Citadel is going to be talking to everybody, getting as much Codex entries as we can, but also I'd learning like about, about this about world. I'm sure our history and culture would bore you, Earth Clan. I love the tone that he says, Actually, Earth I Clan. Like to know more about your history. My people came to the Citadel shortly after the Asari and Salarians had discovered it. We were instrumental in establishing a standardized galactic economy. However, despite our long association with the Citadel and our many contributions to galactic society, we still do not hold a seat on the Council. Tell me about Volus culture. We are tribal by nature, but our ways are not violent. We barter and trade our lands and tribe members in order to increase status. Larger tribes often engulf smaller ones and eventually split again. Our society is very malleable, and our government is always shifting and changing. Since we're not physically adept, we trade our services for protection. Oh, neat. You know, I always, always would have wished that in multiplayer, they, you could play as a Volus or an Elcor. <laughs> it would have been so Dan. great. You humans are new to the Citadel, and yet the Council has granted you great favor. Chastising rebuke, Din. Your species has always been granted many concessions. Volus territory has expanded tenfold since coming to the Citadel. <clears throat> Details. We still have no real say in the decisions that affect Citadel space. Goodbye, Ambassador. Yes. And we leveled up. Good day, Earth Clan. The importance of getting codex entries, my friends. So that is uh, a little bit about the Volus, which you're going to be seeing a bunch of them as we progress through the Citadel. You don't really see them anywhere else, though. So we have six more points that we can put into some places. We're not going to worry about our charm or intimidate. Thank you to someone in the comments, actually, for letting me know that the there is still the exploit, I guess you could do that uh, lets you max out your Paragon and Renegade points in a single playthrough, and that is something that we are going to be checking out when we get there. Oh, well, not checking, not uh, your Paragon and Renegade, not your Charm and Intimidate. So that's that's important to remember. So we have six. We're going to hold on to these for just a little bit longer. I'm not going to worry about it too much, although unlocking pistols and getting the Marksman ability isn't a bad idea. That is for sure. Let's go ahead and talk to Kaelin here. Greeting. Human, it is always good to see your kind. I am Ambassador Kalen. Genuine query. Is there something I can do for you this day? I am so curious about these evolved cows. Why do you explain what you're about to say? Our people communicate less through words and more through scent and slight movements. Plainly, we discovered our vocal expression was not enough to convey the feelings of our conversations to other species. Why do you bother, Kalen? These Earth Clan don't really care about our ways. Remorseful response, Din. You don't truly believe that. And if you do, I am very sorry for you. Yeah, I do care, actually. What do you do here? Modestly. I work to bring the problems and the requests of the Elcor groups to the attention of the Council. Ha! Huh. They only give us these positions to keep us quiet. The Council doesn't care about our races. Chastising rebuke. Your tone is inappropriate, Din. This human is not to blame for your malcontent or your misconceived suspicions. What about the Elcor? Tell me more about your species. Genuine enthusiasm. I delight in telling the history of my people. It is agreeable to share our culture with others. Tell me about the history and origins of the Elcor. The Elcor were just beginning to explore Council space when the Asari first made contact with us. With their help, 
we discovered the relay closest to our system, and from there the Citadel. Proudly. Within one lifetime we established a regular route to the Citadel, and quickly became one of the more active species living on this great station. I'd like to know more about the culture of the Elcor. Frankly, we Elcor prefer the safety and familiarity of our own colonies to the confines of space travel. Our society is built on small, tight-knit groups, though we are always welcoming to outsiders. Our government tends to be very stable. Our people are not very comfortable with sudden changes. I love Goodbye, it. Ambassador. Sincere farewell. Good day to you, human. Enjoy your time Thank on the Thank you. Sea. What a nice, what a nice guy he is. What a not nice guy the other guy is. But that's fine. That's that's the Volus for you. So I, the, a lot of the Citadel, your first time here, is going to be talking to people. Of course, you don't have to. You can skip all of that if you want. But uh, I, you know, a big thing about this game is how deep day, the Commander. lore is. The human ambassadors up the stairs, first room on the right. Uh, have we? Do you know who I am? Yes, I receive reports on all newly arrived dignitaries and notable people. I'm notable. What is this place? This is the Presidium. More specifically, you are at the Citadel Embassies. If you have more questions, please access Savina. Now, you might be wondering, who is the absolutely beautifully majestic blue alien? That, my friends, is an Asari, one of the races on the council, and one of the more popular races that you'll see throughout the game, uh, one of the more powerful races you'll see throughout the game. Uh, who's Avina? What's that? Oh, Avina is the virtual guide for the Citadel. Feel free to access the terminal yourself. And yeah, they're hot. What's your name? What do you do here? My name is Sephiria. I'm the administrative assistant for the embassies. What a cool name. You seem to be distracted. The embassies are the hub of all Citadel politics. <laughs> when you represent trillions of citizens, it tends to get a little busy. All right, that was a little kind of silly. So now. I'm gonna go. Have a pleasant day. Yeah, you as well. Kind of, kind of, you know, kind of. You know, it's fine. Never mind. Anyways, we're gonna head up here. There's a little bit more that we can explore of just the embassies. Now, our main goal here is that we actually want to head to the the uh, the council tower, where at the, the real heart of where the council is, so that we can have our our hearing with the council. But right here, we can examine these for some codex entries and some XP, which is pretty nice for us. Talk to the Elcor if you want. While you're, you know, walking by real quick. And in this room, there is another computer that we can... Nope, that's not the right room. The right... It's right here. Uh, <laughs> this is Executor Palin's office. This guy is in charge of CSEC. CSEC being the security on the Citadel. Uh, obviously, that's a pretty big deal when you are, like, the police force of the entire galactic government. Um, he's the, he's the guy, he's the guy in charge, but we're going to manually override his computer and steal all of the information off of it. His credit cards, his bank account, social security number, diplomatic advisory warning. The following message was transmitted from an untraceable account to multiple recipients across the extranet. Further monitoring of the situation is warranted. My fellow biotic, you have been selected to receive this transmission because of our shared plight. Few understand us, understand us, fewer tolerate us. We must stand together. We must build our own new world. Come, join us in the Hawking Ada Cluster. Only as one body can we right the wrongs done to our kind. And we get another journal entry, because that, my friends, is another quest that we can undergo. So let's go ahead and talk Shepherd, to Executor Palin. I didn't expect to see you here. Did Ambassador Udina send you? Uh, who are Have you? We met before? No, but I know you well enough. I'm Executor Palin, head of CSEC. It's my job to know when someone like you arrives on the Citadel. Was there something you needed, Commander? Someone like me? I get the feeling you're not too fond of humans. No, I just don't trust your kind. Not yet. You humans are eager to take all the power you can get, and you're being given a lot. If the Council wants to make humanity their new favorite pet, that's their business. But I don't have to like it. The Council treats us like second-class citizens. We have to fight for everything we get. Good. Then fight for it. But don't expect the rest of us to just sit back and let you take it. I'm a busy man, Commander. Are we done here? Well, not really, because there's a lot more to ask you about. What do you know about the Spectres? They're the right hand of the Council, or so they like to be called. More like the underhanded side of the Council. What do you have against the Spectres? 
I can't abide any organization that considers itself above the law. Especially when it's left up to each individual specter to decide when and how to bend the rules. Sometimes you have to bend the law to keep people safe. I've been with CSEC for 30 years. I've never had to break the law to do my job, not once. Imagine yeah, if... <laughs> right. You expect us to believe none of your officers are corrupt? Exactly. There are over 200,000 CSEC agents. Some of them are going to be bad. But we don't turn a blind eye to corruption like the Spectres do. We do our best to find and punish any officer who breaks the law. Spectres. They'll never come under that kind of scrutiny. Well, I know one that should, The so. galaxy needs people like that. People who do the dirty jobs. I agree. But they need to be held to a higher standard. They need to be accountable. Saren's out of control. We both know that. But because he's a Spectre, the Council doesn't want to do anything about it. Is that the kind of person this galaxy needs? But not all specters are like Saren. True. But the potential is always there. You know, he's got a point. I actually like this guy quite a bit. Tell me about CSEC. CSEC provides necessary police and security services throughout the Citadel. We're a civilian government agency, though many of our members have had military training. Of course, as the CSEC representative to the Council, I spend most of my time liaising between the two. Tell me about your investigation into Saren. Sorry, Commander. I don't make a habit of giving out details about ongoing investigations. Yeah, but I'd really like to know be it before the now. hearing. Goodbye. It's Commander. good to know, though, that the person kind of uh, heading up this investigation, knowing about the investigation, isn't, like, you know, too fond of Saren. That's that's probably for the best. Anyways, we can talk to a bartender. Hello, Commander. Can I get you something? Hell yeah! What have you got? Information, mostly. Would you like to know about some points of interest nearby? Uh, I was hoping you had What's boots, going on around here? That's fine. Well, you found the embassies. Not much going on here. Across the bridge, you'll find the bank, the Emporium, and Shaira's. If you haven't heard of her, you soon will. If you need supplies, you can try the markets one level below. For entertainment, I'd try Flux or Cora's Den. What is Shaira's? Mm -hmm. The consort, uh, she entertains clients who can afford her services. Most of the nice, diplomatic ambassadors dude. have visited her at one time or another. She's a very powerful woman, but also very respected. Nice. Tell me about Flux and Cora's Den. Well, Flux has gambling and dancing, certainly more lively than this place. Cora's Den, on the other hand, well, let's just say it's livelier and deadlier all at the same time. It's kind of like the cantina Goodbye. from Star Wars, you know? So long, Commander. Have a pleasant day. We'll be talking to Dasana later. I don't have time to talk now. I'm very busy. Right now, she doesn't have anything to say to us because she's rude. But we can talk Trump to... Oops, didn't mean to take out my gun, Consort Private Fredericks. Secrets. What do you want? Hey. Well, Commander. What is, is there up with your something hair something I can do dude? for you? Relax, Private. This isn't an inspection. Right. Sorry. What can I do for you, Commander? What can you tell me about the Asari Consort? I, uh, well, she's an Asari who works here as, that is, she helps people with things. You never went to see her, did you, Fredericks? I, uh, no, I never did. Uh, I couldn't afford it. It costs half a year's credits just to go in and talk to her. Wow. Can you at least tell me where I can find her? Sure. She's across the bridge from the embassies. Thanks, kid. Have fun. Try not to get into too much trouble. I will. Have fun, that is. Yeah, all right. See you, Private. The diplomat here. This seems strange. Wish there were more humans around. Yeah, I'm good. I like the uh, the variety, if you will. Variety is the spice of life. Less humans, more Asari. Thank you very much. Or Quarians. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Presidium. And right here is Avina, the Please, AI that we can talk to. Welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel Space Station. So, um... We're going to say virtual guide. <laughs> I am a fully Not are you interactive healed? virtual intelligence program to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals should you require assistance. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, 
where the council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. That's pretty cool. Hey, what can you tell us about the what Citadel Council? What can you tell council? me about the Citadel Council? Originally, the council consisted of representatives from the Asari and Salarians, the two dominant species in Citadel space. Roughly 1,304 galactic standard years ago, Turians were invited to join the council in recognition of the role they played during the Krogan Rebellion. Since then, the three council races have worked together to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the galactic community while preserving individual autonomy for each species. The Krogan Rebellion? It can't be as simple as that. There must be problems somewhere in the system. I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. <laughs> She's like, hey, what's your opinion on in this entire galactic government suit? <laughs> hey, uh, VI, just out of curiosity. So I, I want to know more about Citadel security. Citadel security serves as law enforcement for That's all regions of, of the course. Citadel, though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. Now, I do kind of feel bad because a lot of these early episodes are kind of talking to people and getting full information and stuff. And uh, I, I fully understand that it's probably the, not the most entertaining thing to watch. But for completion's sake, I do think it's important to, uh, to show this off. If you guys have any ideas, though, on how best to give you this information, let me know. Tell me about the embassies. Each species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. So the Volus were first over almost 3,000 years ago. We've been here for 19 years, and they're already talking about... Oh, man. Why were people trying to keep my species out? Some species felt humanity was given preferential treatment. It often takes a century or more before a new species is granted an embassy. The Council gave a great deal of thought to this matter. In the end, they decided humanity's impact on Citadel space was significant enough to warrant an embassy. So we could ask her what she thinks, but she's just going to tell us that she can't make that call. How come the Volus were the first species given an embassy? In the early years following the formation of the Council, the Volus were, apart from the Asari and Salarians, the most populous and widespread species in Citadel space. They established many new colonies and trading outposts, and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel just an embassy why weren't they made a council race the council races have extensive responsibilities they must provide personnel and ships for the citadel fleets they often provide economic aid in times of disaster it would be unfair to demand such an enormous burden of a species unable to meet these obligations the embassies allow lesser species to have a voice on the citadel lesser species that's pretty damn arrogant I apologize if my personality has offended you. Please submit all formal complaints in writing to the Citadel Tourist and Visitor Board. No wonder why the Elcor and, and them are, are mad about it. Anyways, what about Spectres? Do you know anything about Spectres? The term Spectre is derived from the branch of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. Each Spectre agent is handpicked by the Council. Their primary role is preserving galactic stability and resolving volatile situations that cannot be handled through normal political channels. In this role, they are granted extraterritorial rights and jurisdictions. Spectres answer to no law or authority except the Council itself. I wonder how many active Spectres there are at any Goodbye. one point. Anyways, we can Goodbye. end that conversation and get 12 new experience points. Please you gotta love it. So, down video. here... You'll see a little bit of a sign there. We could do, we could go this way to head uh, to um, CSEC Academy, uh, but we're not going to head there just yet. There's other places that we can go. 
Uh, more important places, I would say, before you head to CSEC. I actually don't recommend heading to CSEC at all yet. So, let's go ahead and run all the way over here. Look at how amazing the Citadel is. This is just a little tiny piece of the Citadel. Right over there, you'll see a big statue of a Krogan. That's a memorial for the Krogan Rebellion. And, uh, well, we'll get over there and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But first, we want to head over here to Shaira's place. This is the consort, the, the consort herself. Hello. Hi, I'm just here to book a... Welcome, I am Nelina. I don't recognize you as one of our expected clients today. Would you like me to see when the consort will be able to meet with you? Uh, sure. Can't I just go in? Mm, I'm afraid not. Yeah, you must understand there are many who seek the consort services. But if you wish to leave your name, she'll make every effort to meet with you. Um, what about this what consort? What is the consort? What does she do? Mm, it's difficult to explain. She's many things to many people and something different for each. Some yeah. seek her for advice, some for entertainment, Thanks. others still for pleasure. Oh. Most of the time, our clients won't oh. realize what they were seeking until after she has provided it for them. You make her sound like some kind of oracle. No, not in the usual sense. She's merely a woman. A woman with remarkable compassion and a generous spirit. I suggest you make an appointment and see for yourself. Okay. What about some uh, personal questions? What do you do here, Nalina? I'm one of the consort's acolytes. Many of the people here today will not see the consort, but they expect to be attended to just the same. It's our job to ensure that they leave contented. What exactly do you attend to? Well, each acolyte has her unique abilities. Some soothe with song, others with conversation. As much as possible, we seek to match the needs of our clients to the skills of our acolytes. My specialty is touch. My fingertips can find every tension point in your body and relieve it. Um, I'd like to talk. I'd like to try out your services. Yeah. Excellent. I'll add you to our client list. We should be able to see you in mm, three or four months. Uh, what? Nobody's worth that much of a wait. <laughs> well, that's not for me to judge. I have your name and you'll be contacted. Is there anything else? Um, no. I think I'm done here. Oh, well, I hope you'll return again in the future. We always enjoy seeing new clients. Nalina. Yes, Shaira? Send the commander up to see me. I wish to speak with her. Yes, of course, mistress. Yes. Blue alien love. Hello. It appears the consort has taken notice of you. She'd like to meet with you now. Where do I go? Just head upstairs. She'll be waiting for you. Great. Let's go. Look at all these guys hanging out, talking. This is awesome. What a cool area. Also, this uh, this character's voice actor, real quick. You're with the Alliance? My brother's a private back on Earth. Absolutely voices an NPC in Final Fantasy X. I know it. I just, I just don't know who that voice actor is, but I love her voice. Anyways, we want to head up here. Let's talk to Shaira. This is all side quest central, my friends. That is close enough, Commander. I've heard a great many things about you since your arrival here in our citadel. What exactly do you do? That depends on your needs. I offer advice to some, comfort to others. I have a certain problem that could use your expertise. Maybe I can help. I have a friend, Septimus, a retired Turian general. I won't discuss the details, but he wanted me to be more than I could be. We had a falling out. Now he spends his days in Korra's den, drinking and spreading lies about me. If you would speak to him as a fellow soldier, I believe he will listen to you and let the matter be. What happened between you? I respect his privacy too much to go into the details. If he wishes to tell you what happened, that is his prerogative. Sure. What exactly do you want me to tell him? Appeal to a sense of honor. Remind him of his position as a general. If you can convince him to stop spreading lies about me, I would be very grateful. Are you hugging me? Like, what, what are you doing? Okay. Now I must ask you to take your leave. I what have is many this? clients waiting to this see me. This is a cool... I want to hang out in that. 
that looks awesome anyways that's all that we can do now for this for this moment so it looks like we need to go talk to general septimus or you know retired general septimus over in cora's den that's pretty handy because i think we have to head there anyways but of course we have a little bit more exploring that we can do my friends if we head down this way we'll be able to check out this statue over here of the krogan pretty darn neat why is there a statue of a krogan when they said something about a krogan rebellion if you talk to kaden here sure is peaceful here it is i can't tell the aliens from the animals uh maybe don't say that out loud ashley but I think we can get some more information if we talk to Welcome Avina. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 3. Here in the financial district, a number of businesses offer various goods and services to their exclusive clientele. The statue you see before you was commissioned to honor the Krogan soldiers who gave their lives to protect Citadel space during the Rachni Wars. In the aftermath of the Krogan rebellions, several embassies petitioned to have the statue removed. However, this motion was eventually quashed by the Council. The Rachni Wars happened before the Krogan Rebellion. Tell me more about the Krogan Rebellions. In recognition of their efforts during the Rachni Wars, the Krogan were granted several new colony worlds by the Council. Over the next 400 years, the Krogan species began to expand. Blessed with an extremely high birth rate, their numbers began to swell. Faced with a critical overpopulation crisis, the Krogan started a violent colonization of nearby worlds inhabited by other Council species. The Krogan rebellions had begun. For a full century, the Council and its member species fought to bring the Krogan under control. With the aid of the newly discovered Turian Empire, they were ultimately successful. You needed the Krogan to stop the Rachni, then you needed the Turians to stop the Krogan. So who's going to stop the Turians? I am sorry, but that question is beyond my programming parameters. The Turians are members of the Citadel Council. They are not a threat to galactic peace. Yeah, right now. What were the Rachni Wars? Nearly 2200 years ago, explorers seeking to expand Citadel space opened up mass relays leading to systems controlled by the Rachni. A highly intelligent and aggressive insect race the Rachni unleashed a war of conquest against the rest of the galaxy that lasted for nearly three centuries. The emergence of the Krogan finally turned the tide in favor of the Citadel species. Krogan forces provided the numbers necessary to halt the Rachni advance and drive them back. The Krogan then pursued their retreating fleets. Able to survive the harsh environments of the Rachni homeworlds, the Krogan hunted their enemy to extinction. Was it really necessary to wipe them out? I am sorry, but a value judgment of that nature goes beyond my programming. Yeah, I could see. I Why could did see the Council that. fight so hard to keep the statue? The Krogan were instrumental in saving the galaxy from the Rachni threat. The Council believed this historical fact should not be forgotten. The Council also hoped that preserving the memorial would improve diplomatic relations with the Krogan and bring about a peaceful resolution to the rebellions. Unfortunately, the Krogan refused to negotiate and only surrendered after their population and homeworlds had been ravaged by the Turians. Uh, I don't, well... Sounds like they got what they deserved. I yeah, sorry, I didn't want to, that, that's, that's, that's not now. quite what I wanted to say. Anyways, we'll get a bunch of experience for that, 24 experience for that codex entry there. I, man, I don't think the Krogan deserved all that, but but it is kind of interesting to me that the Krogan had a, a pretty huge issue there. Anyways, we can talk to yet another race. Ah, human. This one is greatly pleased to see you here in my decadent emporium. Who are you? This one's face name is Delaninder, though many in this place simply refer to it as Delan. Please take time to examine the fine goods it has for purchase. All of great worth. Interesting. Why do you refer to yourself as this one and it? For the same reason that humans are so inquisitive. It is part of our culture. Specifically, Hanar only refer to themselves in the first person with family or intimates. 
and we rarely do so with other species. It is just our way. Neat. What exactly do you sell? Only the finest and most luxurious items that credits can buy. This one is able to procure almost any item the human would desire. For a price, naturally. Neat. Who are you? I already asked that. Please take time Anyways, to examine the fine goods. Show me your items. Let's see what he has for sale. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. You will not be disappointed. I absolutely love their the way they do their voices. It's so cool. So, anyways, we'll see what upgrades we can get here. There's a stimulant pack that we can buy. Combat sensor cryo explosive. We're not going to worry about those right now. We did get 24 experience Commander. for having those codex entries for talking to him. Let's see what they have for standard items here. These are, of course, our human, but we can grab the Serta Foundation license for only a hundred moolahs. Want to make sure that we get those licenses. Remember in the last episode when we talked to the guy down in the Normandy, uh, he actually said that the more licenses we have, the more we can buy from him. So that's good. Right over here, we have Barlavon at the bank. Hello, Barlavon. What's this? One of the Earth Clan. Ah, a very famous one, yes? You are the one called Shepard. The tale of how you survived the great tragedy on Akuz is truly remarkable. I am amazed each time I hear it. Uh, You've we got met. me at a disadvantage here. Forgive me, Earth Clan. My name is Barlavon. My job makes it necessary for me to keep informed. I am a financial advisor to many important clients here on the Citadel. When someone as important as yourself arrives on the station, I take notice. Interesting. Tell me more about your job. Galactic finance is incredibly complex. A mix of laws and regulations from dozens of interstellar economies. I'm an expert in how all these economies interact. For a fee, I share my expertise. I also offer premium services for those clients who need someone to conduct business without drawing unwanted attention. Discreet and efficient. That's my motto. There's a lot of talking in this episode, my friends. Sounds pretty shady. Everything I do falls completely within the bounds of interstellar commerce law. Even so, many of my clients would prefer their transactions remain undisclosed. For example, suppose a Hanar ambassador was petitioning the council to reduce tariffs on Hanar goods. How would it look if he had money invested in a Hanar exporting company? Even if his true motives were to help his people, he would be accused of advancing the petition for his own personal gain. I can keep his personal finances private. Still sounds shady to me. Then we can only hope you will never be cursed with a large enough fortune to require my services. That's a little rude. What's it like living here on the Citadel? The station is without a doubt the greatest wonder in the galaxy. It is a technological marvel, but its true splendor goes much deeper than the hull and engines. From the Presidium to the wards, the entire station is a testament to the success of the Council. All the species of Citadel space together in a single strong community. What are the wards like? The cultural heart of the galaxy. They pulse with the lifeblood of millions of citizens from dozens of different species. You never know what you'll find down in the wards, Commander. It's always full of surprises. Fortunately, most of them are pleasant. Anybody else feeling like maybe there's some information overload happening? Apologies. Do let me know, sincerely. Uh, how best can we present this information to you in a better way? Of course, this is one of the biggest episodes for just blatant information. Uh, but let me know. Anyways, let's ask him about the Presidium. What makes the Presidium so special? It is the political center of Citadel space. 80% of all intelligent species in the known galaxy acknowledge the Council's authority on interstellar matters. But only the most powerful and influential species have embassies here on the Presidium. This level of the station is reserved for the elite, Shepard, people like us. Oh, I see. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Now, remember where Barlavon Bar is here because we actually will be coming back to chat with him. Now, something else I want to point out is that we have the Citadel Repair uh, Rapid Transit 
things all over uh, the place that will allow us to fast travel. Once we kind of leg it to where the places are in general, you'll see that we actually can, you know, have access to them. But the main goal here is that we want to head to the Citadel Towers, where the council is. We're not doing that right away because obviously there's a bunch of codex entries we can get and places that we kind of want to know for later. And I kind of want to make sure that we get all of the info dump out in this episode and then the story stuff later. Hmm, we can examine this keeper. Bug thing, huh? Oh, okay, sorry. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 2. You are standing near the base of the Citadel Tower, one of the Presidium's most recognizable and important structures. Behind me is the spectacular Relay Monument, a scale model representation of a Prothean mass relay. To your left is one of the Keepers, the enigmatic caretakers of the Citadel, working on a control panel. You may see Keepers involved in various tasks throughout all levels of the Citadel. We ask that you do not interfere with them in any way. The Keepers are essential to the smooth operation of the Citadel. Obstructing their daily work will result in harsh penalties, including incarceration and rehabilitation. Wait, so what are the Keepers? I'd like to know more about the Keepers. Little is known about these peaceful servants of the Citadel, though they are essential to the operation and maintenance of the entire station. Citadel regulations protect the Keepers against interference during the performance of their tasks. Failure to comply will result in harsh penalties. Keepers can be seen in all sections of the Citadel, but are typically found in and around the tower. Any particular reason there are so many Keepers in this area? The Keepers do not communicate with other species. It is assumed, however, that the tower houses the Citadel's primary control systems. Many of the station systems, such as navigation and life support, function automatically. It is believed the Keepers operate those systems from inside the tower's inaccessible core. The Keepers also make frequent appearances in the Council Chamber itself, though they appear to be just passing through on their way to some other destination. So, no one knows anything about these Keepers, but they run everything. All of Galactic Civilization basically relies on them keeping this place, but yet no one knows where they're from or anything. That's a little scary. Tell me about the Citadel Tower. Housing both the Council Chambers and Citadel Control, the tower is one of the most important buildings on the station. Access to these areas is restricted to those with the appropriate clearance. What happens in Citadel Control? Citadel Control handles all incoming and outbound transit. Every ship within 2,000 kilometers of the Citadel is under the jurisdiction of Citadel Control. At peak capacity, they are responsible for monitoring upwards of a thousand vessels. That is a lot. I'd like to hear more about the council chambers. The business of the council, which often has far-reaching effects on the galactic community, is conducted in a room at the apex of the Citadel Tower. The council chambers themselves are truly a magnificent sight to behold, though few get to experience the view in person. Typically, only the counselors, ambassadors, and high-ranking officials, along with various support staff, are allowed access. What if someone has business with the council? The average citizen must go through the proper channels if they wish an audience with the council. This is usually arranged through their respective ambassadors. Which is exactly what Even we're doing. Then, few are given access to the actual council chambers. In most cases, the ambassador acts on behalf of the citizen. I'm scheduled to have an audience with the Council. Only a handful of visitors to the Citadel are ever granted that privilege. I would be jealous, but that is outside the scope of my program. <laughs> That's kind of funny. What about the Relay Monument? Tell me more about the Relay Monument. Discovered by the Asari who first arrived at the Citadel, the Relay Monument is one of the station's most interesting and controversial features. What is the meaning behind this striking piece of art? Is it a tribute to Prothean vanity? A reminder of their conquest of the galaxy through mass relay technology? Or perhaps it is a symbol of unity, a Prothean acknowledgement that the relays would eventually lead other species here to the Citadel. No one can say for sure, making the relay monument a favorite topic of discussion among academics and scholars. Now, hear me out. That's all for now. What if that Thank you for using a relay monument Have is a actually just a day. small relay? Hello, academics. Did you ever consider that? With you and your endless knowledge. Anyways, finally, we can head to the Citadel Tower 
by using one of the infamous elevators in Mass Effect 1. The council isn't going to ask me any questions, are they? I doubt it. We've made our reports. Now we just have to trust Ambassador Udina. No, we don't, sir. And you can hit X if you want to skip these. Although I do recommend not doing that, surprisingly, because there is a lot of, like, sometimes you can. But there is typically a lot of information that you can actually get about the the overall world and the impact that you're making on it. Also, Garrus. Garrus Vicarian. Something. Give me more time. Stall them. Stall the council? Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. I love you. Sounds like you really want to bring him down. I don't trust him. Something about him rubs me the wrong way. But he's a specter. Everything he touches is classified. I can't find any hard evidence. I think the Council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. Maybe. It was nice to meet you. Council waiting. I'm sure we'll meet again, Garrus Vicarian. Probably. This is just my guess. But probably in the next episode that premieres tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. Anyways, we want to head up to the up the Citadel Tower. There's a lot of things that we'll be grabbing on our way back down, but as of this moment, we can't actually grab anything. We'll be back here, though. Trust me. A keeper just sitting there. Looks like it's stunned. Interesting. Up here, we can talk to Captain Anderson. The hearing's already started. Come on. We can have the our meeting is a with the council. Of some concern. But there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. The investigation by Citadel Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. An eyewitness what? saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow specter and a friend. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson. You always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The one who let the beacon get destroyed. The mission to Eden Prime was top secret. The only way you could know about the beacon was if you were there. With Nihilus gone, his files passed on to me. I read the Eden Prime report. I was unimpressed. But what can you expect from a human? Oh, man. Saren despises humanity. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that. That's not his decision. Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor, and mine. You know what? I'll find proof, buddy. You can't hide behind the Council forever. There is still one outstanding issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered by the beacon. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? How can I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony? I agree. Our judgment must be based on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander Shepard? You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. Oh, this is not good. This meeting good. is adjourned. Damn you, Council! Look at Udina being all sad. Well, that could have gone better, it my friends. It was a mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. How do you know Saren, Tell me though? about this history between you and Saren. I worked with him on a mission a long time ago. Things went bad. Real bad. We shouldn't talk about this here, but I know what he's like, and he has to be stopped. 
Well, what do we do now? What's our next step? As a Spectre, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the Executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. Yeah, I'll go talk to Any Garrus. Any idea where we could find him? I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. I don't know. Don't be you rude. You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. The Ambassador's right. I need to step aside. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's Den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barla Vaughn over in the financial district. Rumor has it he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Barla Vaughn's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren, but his information won't come cheap. You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago, I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist threat. Saren eliminated his target, but a lot of people died along the way, innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience, no hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. Jeez. Also, that line about the Shadow Broker, keep that in mind as we move into Mass Effect Killing 2. Wait, 10 years wars. from now. It causes them. I know how the world works, Commander. Sometimes you're forced to make unpleasant decisions, but only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. Mm, interesting. What about the Shadow Broker? Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. He's a necessary evil of galactic politics. Buying and selling information is a part of the game. And the Shadow Broker just happens to be the best player on the field. Always sells to the highest bidder. Doesn't get involved in politics. Doesn't pick sides. A simple system, but it works. He's not a threat to anyone. Not directly. He's just a resource we can use. Or she is. Or maybe they are. Nobody really knows. Interesting. Tell us more about Barla Vaughn. Tell me about Barla Vaughn. He specializes in moving large sums of money without leaving a paper trail. A financial genius. Doesn't do anything illegal. But he knows all the loopholes. He's got an impressive client list. Ambassadors, diplomats, specters. That's probably why the Shadow Broker uses him. Makes sense. Speaking of specters... I want to know more about the specters. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone. Behind the scenes. They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation. But sometimes more extreme measures are needed. How do they decide who becomes a Spectre? You can't just apply to join. There's no training program. Spectres aren't made. They're born. The Council's always looking for exceptional individuals. People who can get the job done, like you. They've been watching you for years. Creepy. They see something in you. They want you on their side. Nihilus was supposed to give them a final recommendation. But with him gone, things are still up in the air. Man. What's their command structure like? There is no command structure. Each Spectre answers directly to the Council. Sometimes they're sent on specific missions. Other times, they act on their own. They tend to operate outside the law. Do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. The Council just turns a blind eye. Spectres have a lot of power, Shepard. Interesting. Is that legal, they though? sound like shadow operatives. Everything about them is classified. We don't even know how many there are. The latest Alliance estimate puts their numbers under a hundred. But the Council couldn't do its job without them. They're the Citadel's top agents. The last line of defense. The final option before open war. The entire galaxy respects and fears them. If a Spectre shows up, you know something big is about to happen. What if one goes too what far? What happens when a Spectre goes rogue? 
like Saren. A hearing and it nothing. It doesn't happen often. <laughs> the counselors careful when they select their candidates. But when something does go wrong, there's usually only one solution. Send another specter to bring the rogue agent down. Makes sense. Hey, what about this Harkin guy? Because you didn't you seem to like him. You don't think much of Harkin. The guy joined CSEC about 20 years ago. He's been an embarrassment to our species ever since. Roughing up suspects in custody, bribery accusations, alcohol and drug use. The embassy used to step in when he got in trouble. But I guess enough was enough. The guy's a scumbag. He should have been cut loose a long time ago. He was one of the first human CSEC officers. Guess it would have looked bad if he got fired. A lot of backroom deals were worked out over the years to keep him on the force. Politics is a dirty business sometimes, but it looks like his time's yep. run out. We've got enough humans in CSEC now to stop protecting. All right, I think that's all that we can I get. Go. Good luck, Shepard. I'll be over in the ambassador's office if you need anything else. Great, that's actually where we started when we arrived on the Citadel. Uh, so there is more there. Right out of the gate, you saw that we got the Codex and plus 12 more experience. Not too bad, uh, sitting at level 3. My friends, we are going to end this episode here. So I think the next episodes are going to be a lot more action-packed. We're adding two new squad mates in the very next episode. And, of course, some big, big firefights right here in the Citadel that are going to be super exciting. Thank you guys so much for watching. And a huge shout-out to those of you watching the premieres every single day at 2 p.m. Eastern. I sincerely appreciate you guys. If there is anything else you want to know, any trophies that you're struggling with or anything like that, leave a comment below, and I'll be sure to get to it. Thank you guys so much. And remember, never give up, never surrender to the council. Sure, that, 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 that works, Corey. <laughs>